Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining me. On this episode of Build Your Own, we're going to build price and option a 2021 Bentley Flying Spur W12, as well as learn about the features and other configurations. Before we do, however, I just want to remind you that if you find this build and price review helpful, informative, or entertaining, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. For some, pulling up to a destination in a new luxury car is reward enough. But for a lucky few, nothing short of an ultra-exclusive ride like the 2021 Bentley Flying Spur will do. From its twin turbocharged engines to its opulent leather and wood-lined enclave of a cabin, the Flying Spur is built to both pamper its passengers and thrill its driver. Many buyers may choose to be chauffeured and for good reason. The Spur's rear seat is a relaxing retreat. But for those who plan to drive themselves... This sportiest Bentley sedan offers eyebrow-raising athleticism marked by surprisingly agile handling and outrageous straight-line speed. All of this prestige comes with a princely price tag, of course, one that soars as you customize it from the company's Mulliner catalog of bespoke options and packages. The Flying Spur was redesigned for the 2020 model year, so 2021 brings only minor tweaks. Chief among them is a newly optional four-seat configuration, which replaces the rear bench seat with two buckets with a fixed center console that runs the entire length of the sedan's cabin. Elsewhere, a new steering wheel design provides more access to the car's driver assist features. New wood trim inserts are available for the rear door panels, and rear seat picnic tables are an option. The interior can now be ordered with either a carbon fiber trim or a machined metal finish. Upgrading from the base V8 engine to the more powerful W12 is an easy choice from my perspective. Bentley customers can choose from one of several curated themes such as Cool Harmony, Storm Noir, or Alter Ego when ordering their Flying Spur, or you can go with a fully bespoke build to make it uniquely yours. A seemingly endless array of exterior colors and styling choices await you in the Bentley Mulliner customization program. The same goes for interior appointments, which can include several different types of wood, different colored leather, and polished metal accents. Upgrading from the standard city specification to touring specification adds several driver assist features and there's even an optional refrigerated compartment to keep your beverages cool. Okay, let's jump into this build and price review of the 2021 Bentley Flying Spur. Real quick, before we actually get started, I just want to remind you to take a look at some of my other related build and price reviews. I've put links down in the description below. I was just on this Bentley website not that long ago, just a couple of weeks ago, because I just did a build and price review of the 2021 Bentley Bentayga V8 Touring Spec. Nice SUV. I did the Rolls-Royce Culliner, and I did uh, the Aston Martin DBX. I did all three of the high-end, ultra-exclusive uh, SUVs, and I really like the Bentley Bentayga. So that link's down in the description below. Now, some uh, sedans that actually compete directly with this new Flying Spur uh, that I've done build and price reviews of. I just did a build and price review of the 2021 uh, BMW Alpina B7 X-Drive sedan. That is a honey of a, a sedan. I have liked that sedan since 08. Uh, I also did the 2020 Mercedes Maybach S650 sedan. Certainly competes directly with this <clears throat> uh, Bentley Flying Spur. And uh, I did the 2020 Mercedes AMG S63 sedan. Now, it, with its price point, is going to compete more with, say, the, the the Flying Spur V8. But, yeah, the S63, definitely a player if you're looking at a car like this. And then I just remember, uh, I actually, I've done a, another Bentley, an older one. I did a 2018 Bentley Mulsanne Speed. And that was really my first Bentley video. Uh, even before the Bentega. So, after you watch this video, make sure you watch one or two of those other videos as well. Okay, so as we can see here, getting started with our uh, our build and price, what we're going to first do is check out the configurations. We'll go through the gallery, check out all the features, and then we'll jump over to the configurator and spec out our W12, which is the one over here. So we got the new Flying Spur over here. It's the one with the, w, the 6 liter W12 engine. It's got an MSRP. They don't put it out here. But it's got an MSRP somewhere around $220,000. Then you've got the 4-liter turbocharged V8. 
And I think it's got an MSRP somewhere around about $188,000, $190,000 for the V8. So you've got it in two different trim levels. Uh, We're going to do it in the W12. I figure we're going to do it with the big uh, 6-liter 12-cylinder engine. Uh, But before we actually get to the build, like I said, let's check out uh, the gallery and check out the features. So we have a few little galleries. They don't have many photos uh, at all. But here they're showing us a nice shot of the W12 here. Uh, here's a shot of the V8, right? Your V8 is, you know, it's, it's got the smaller engine. It's every bit of a Bentley, but it's a little bit cheaper, a little bit cheaper. Uh, but nothing wrong with that. Beautiful headlamps. Beautiful. Love those. Showing a shot of the V8. Showing a shot of the uh, the the mascot, the Flying B Radiator mascot. They say this one's illuminated. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so those are the images. But there's another spot where they have a few more images of the W12 specifically. So let's go over there. Okay, so here's a nice shot of a W12. It's a gorgeous car. I love the big wheels. I love the I love the sculpting over the rear uh, fender quarter panels back there. It's a gorgeous car. I notice how the the vent right here on the side of the fender has a similar shape to the to the hood ornament. The same kind of B as the hood ornament. And so that's very cool. Interior very nice diamond quilt of course they show the headlamps again a little closer shot of the bmw uh, uh, bmw the bentley stitching uh very nice they're showing the flying b again and we saw this photo uh from the overview of the back seat but they don't show the optional where they put the center console in the back where they make this a four seater if you want it but these are all the photos they have so let's go check the features So here they're talking about design features of the 2021 uh, Bentley Flying Spur, the new Flying Spur. Uh, They say that it's got uh, the signature vertical vane and matrix grille. So the grille is their signature grille. It's a four-door Grand Tourer. It's got a powerful aesthetics. Uh, You got 21-inch twin 10-spoke wheels. Uh, You got that Flying B mascot that's illuminated. Uh, That's standard, as is those wheels. Uh, and yeah, they don't really say a whole bunch. It's a gorgeous car. Here they're just showing a shot of the interior, talking about the the, the cabin. It's got a contemporary design. Uh, it's got sumptuous style, pure relaxation. Uh, they say words like a harmonious interior. Uh, you can opt for the Mulliner driving ses- uh, specification if you choose. Uh, you can get the lofted diamond design, which this looks like that might be the lofted diamond design. Uh, They have crown cut walnut veneer uh, and all that. So cool stuff. What this what this car is really about is getting into that configurator. They're not going to really get into too much on their design. There's just too much stuff to go into, I guess. Here's some more shots of that interior. It's very, very nice. Uh, So we can step inside the flying spur with the configurator and we'll do that shortly. There's a black line specification, apparently. Uh, which offers distinctive bold takes. So basically, it's going to give you blacked out trim. So probably everything that was chrome on the exterior, yeah, every chrome element on the exterior bright work is replaced with gloss black painted versions. So it's just a, a like a nightshade package is what BMW or Mercedes sometimes calls theirs. This seems to be popular among manufacturers these days. When they come out with the first model for the first year, they'll call it a first edition. I've seen other manufacturers use that term, first edition. So here, the new Bentley Flying Spur is going to be a first edition. It's a rare and highly collectible model with an addition of uh, of a number of desirable features as standard, like the badge in the center right here. You get that badge. Uh, you get exclusive uh, electronic. De- uh, you get an electronically deployed Flying B mascot, polished steel with illuminated wings. You get the Mulliner driving specification. Uh, you get uh, unique 22-inch wheels. They got a little clickable thing here that says more. Uh, you get the uh, mood lighting, welcome lighting, dual finish veneer, deep pile over mats. I guess that's called carpet. Uh, and you get the contrast stitching. Uh, from their touring specification. So the first edition just isn't an appearance that just isn't a, a plaque. They give you a lot for it and they're probably going to be asking a few extra dollars for the first edition as well. Well, the performance is no joke, is it? 207 miles an hour, right? 
626 horsepower. I don't know what 900 newton meters of torque is. We can find out. That looks to be about 663 pound-feet of torque, 900 newton meters. So the Bentley Flying Spurs got some serious go-go juice, right? It's got some serious speed behind it. Six liter W12, zero to 63.7 seconds. Uh, it's got an eight-speed dual-clutch transmission. Uh, they don't say anything about all-wheel drive. I guess it's going to be rear-wheel drive. That is what it is. Okay, that's they're going to probably stick to classic heritage on that. Uh, if it was all-wheel drive, I'm sure we would have seen something about that already. There are drive modes, however. You do have driving modes that offer comfort and control. You, there's modes like Comfort Sport, Bentley, and Custom. Uh, there's a Bentley Dynamic Ride, which comes as standard and uh, adds even greater levels of control. Uh, has a built-in 48-volt electric active roll system to deliver impressive agility and stability. And this car would need all that kind of agility. It's a big car. So you're going to definitely need an active anti-roll system. But great, it's there. Let's move on. Down here, they're talking about the new electronic uh, all-wheel steering, uh, which uh, reduces the car's turning circles, circle at low speeds for easier parking, and on the open road, it increases the stability of the car. So that's cool. They don't have four-wheel drive, but they do have four-wheel steering. All right, let's talk about technology here. Uh, I can see Apple CarPlay. Uh, they don't say anything about Android Auto. Well, let's hope that it's there. So we got Apple CarPlay. Uh, there's an intelligent system. They're going to have lots of stuff here. Uh, you got the 12.3-inch high-definition touchscreen in the center console. You can see back here, you've got, uh, I don't know if it's standard or not, uh, you got uh, rear climate control that's all digitized. So that's very nice. Uh, let's see, these touchscreen controls we're talking about in here, the in-dash, you know, your infotainment. It can do everything from heating, ventilation, infotainment, sunroof, navigation controls, all that stuff you can do from the uh, infotainment system on this uh, Bentley Flying Spur. Of course, they're going to have an awesome uh, sound system. I see Bang & Olsen down here. That's the high-end nameplate that everybody uses. Uh, so, yeah, you can choose from that. Or they're, they're, they have another system that they call, I can't pronounce it, Naim or Niam or something like that. That's their standard system. That's their in-house system, I think. Or you can option the Bang & Olsen system, which I think that's what I'd rather do. Okay, when you talk about a car like a Bentley or Rolls-Royce or Aston Martin, it's all about customization, individuality, bespoke, this, that, and the other thing. People that buy cars like this, they want one of one. They want it to stand out and be special uh, and all that there. And so here they're just telling us about 17 standard exterior colors as well as 60 optional colors. We're not going to click through every color because when I went through this Bentley configurator with the Bentayga, it's a little slow. Uh, so they got all that. And then you got the Mulliner department that can match any kind of color you might actually want. There's 15 leather hues. So, yeah. Uh, what's more, there's diamond knurling. Available as standard on the main controls. So yeah, you've got you got a lot of luxury and you got a lot of uh, individuality that you can add to this vehicle. Here they're talking about the wood veneers. Uh, there's you can uh, there's eight yeah there's eight single veneers as well as option to add a sleek chrome pin, pinstripe along the center. Uh, there's optional 21 and 22 inch wheels. We know you can get that black line package as well. So what is the Mulliner driving specification? We've I've mentioned it a few times. So what does it do? What does it do? It adds new levels of craftsmanship and attention to detail. Uh, you get larger 22-inch wheels. You get available in, in, that are available in uh, various finishes. Uh, you get a dual finish fuel and oil caps. Okay. Uh, what else do you get? You get uh, lofted diamond quilting on the seats. And stuff like that. So it's more of an appearance package. It's not a performance thing. It's an appearance package. So they have a couple different pages. And here they're showing a sort of similar technology page like we just saw. But it's a little bit different. Because down here they're talking about uh, how there's a new touchscreen remote that gives people in the back uh, convenient access to everything you could do with the central display. So that's cool. Including controlling infotainment, adjusting the ventilation, 
And it can even be used uh, to preset configurations for mood lighting. So that's awesome. Here, just as uh, just as some general information, here they're talking about the uh, the Flying Spur V8, and then it makes 550 PS. And I thought, well, what's 550 PS? What does that translate to to horsepower? So I went to Google. I typed it in. 550 PS comes out to roughly about 542 uh, horsepower, which makes this V8 good for 198 miles an hour for a top speed and 0 to 60 in 4 seconds. Fast for a very big sedan. Bentley, like everybody else, has an app. Uh, this app lets you do it, all kinds of stuff like access Apple CarPlay. It says something about features include Apple CarPlay and photo realistic landscapes through satellite maps, real-time traffic, uh, all that kind of stuff. You can check out your car stats, driving range, things like that. They don't say anything about starting and locking. Well, I can see right here, lock and unlock the car, fuel range. Yeah, everybody's got an app uh, to do stuff like this. Apparently, Bentley is no different. Check this out, the Bentley rotating display. This does look like a section cutout here. Uh, so the Bentley rotating display, uh, so you can hide the infotainment if you want. So hidden behind a beautifully veneered fascia, when you start the car, it rotates to reveal an advanced digital display featuring apps and all that other stuff. Otherwise, it just flips over to that, and maybe you can even close that all together if you don't even want it. So you can switch on when you need to and switch off when you want. So that's very cool. A further rotation reveals three classic analog dials with jewel-like chrome bezels, and that's these bad boys here. How cool is that? So you've got three panels. Here's a flat panel. Here's your infotainment screen, and here's your bezels. That is very nice. So, uh, yeah, there's a touring specification, but there's also uh, here's a city specification. Let's find out about these city, city and touring specifications. The city specification makes urban exploration easier. It's got traffic sign recognition, hands-free trunk opening, city assist, reverse traffic warning, top view camera, automatic dimming mirrors. Now, the, tra the touring specification uh, gives you what? Night vision, heads-up display, night vision assist, heads-up display, and adaptive cruise control. Here, they're just talking about that personalization again. They're showing some different uh, photos. Look at the, the, the knurling, the chrome knurling on, the, on that rotary dial there. I mean, they just talk about stuff like the, fine, the finest leathers, the veneers, uh, all that kind of stuff, the chrome, the carbon fiber body kit, the Bang & Olufsen systems, uh, audio system, all that stuff. They're just telling you all the finery that, you can, that can be had on this vehicle. Then in the intro, I was talking about curated themes. Here's those curate, some of those, not some, here are the curated themes. You've got the Cool Harmony. You've got Cool Harmony, and you can see with its paint color and what its wood and veneers look like inside. And then you've got the Storm Noir, which I particularly like. I love the wheels. I love the, the blacked out interior. Look at the illuminated flying bee. It's very, very nice. You got the Storm Noir. Then you have the Fire and Ice. I do like the Fire and Ice. The Fire and Ice is really, really nice. I do like it a lot. There's many components I like, but I don't know if I like it more than the Storm Noir. You know, it's just something about that. Although it looks like it's got a matte paint that I might, although that looks reflective. I don't want a matte finish paint. Uh, and then there's the Alter Ego. And I think the Bentley Bentega had an Alter Ego one as well. Uh, so we're not going to do the, the Alter Ego. The Fire and Ice is very nice. Do note that I think the Fire and Ice is extremely nice. But I think we're going to go with the Storm Noir. Like I said, you can build it bespoke from scratch. Uh, but like I said, I've been, to the, I've been through this configurator a couple of times. And I think it's a little bit easier to start off with a pre-configuration. And that, I think that works for most folks. And I think that's why they put it together. Otherwise, it just gets really... It gets silly trying to put together all these silly little things like the stitching here and there. For me, it's not that serious. That said, let's configure this Storm Noir. All right, first thing, left-hand drive or right-hand drive? It's coming to the U.S. Let's make it a left-hand driver. Uh, is, did that do anything? Okay, you just got to move it along the slider here. So after that, you've got a bunch of paints. You've got shades of black, shades of blue. Shades of golds, oranges, and browns. Shades of green. You see how it gets a little ridiculous? 
sheds, shades of reds and purples. You've got silvers, and you also have whites and beiges. I don't, I don't know how monocle yellow falls under whites and beiges, but whatever. So, yeah, you got all these different colors. I don't even know what color we have here, to be quite honest with you. They don't even show us what color this is. So, let's just click on a couple of these colors uh, that might stand out. Uh, let's go to the whites and beiges. I'm kind of curious about this Old English white. I think I did Old English white before. Let's see what the Old English white looks like, though. Wow, that looks very beigey to me. It looks very... <laughs> It looks nice, and the whole the whole thing it looks beautiful actually. The whole here's the thing: I don't know what color we had before, so I'm not sure how to get back there. I'm gonna try this storm gray by Mulliner and see if that was our color. If not, I think we're gonna stick with this. Uh, what color was this? Uh, the old English. I think we'll do the old English if this storm gray isn't that other color. No, that storm gray certainly isn't that color for sure. Not that color. So I probably should have just stuck with whatever color that it came with, but I wanted to know the name of that color without having to scroll through everything. It'd be nice if they showed you by what, what everything was by default so you didn't get lost. So let's just do the Old English white. That's what we're going to go with. That's for our paint, and that looks pretty awesome. Uh, for wheels, oh, that's interior. Let's back it up. Let's back it up. For wheels, we got the 21-inch 10-spoke wheels. I like those. Uh, the rest of the wheels are Mulliner specification, and I don't think they're necessarily more attractive. I really don't. These are the 10-spoke wheels, dark gray painted with bright machined. Uh, I think we're going to just stick with those. I think it looks all right. I really do. Um, for the hides, that's our interior. So we got a couple of different options. You can have a color split A where you have, what, contrasting carpet. Is that the deal, where you can have contrasting carpet? Now here's color split B, where it gives you the contrasting carpet, but then it also gave, gives us some contrast in the door panels and some down the center seat console down here as well. Uh, so what else? Now see, going back to color split A here, you can see how uh, the door panel went back to being beige right here, and then the whole center console that runs from the center down to the back, that becomes all beige because with color split B, when you go color split B, you see how it changes it now. And see now once it loads, then it changes faster. So now we can see the difference. Color split B, and then we have color split D. What happened to C? Color split D is all monochromatic, and I actually don't mind that. So let's go, let's go uh color split. Mm, let's go color split D. Right? Let's go color split D. Uh, you know what? I changed my mind. Let's go color split B. Let's go color split B, and then the main hide, the main hide, huh, they got an imperial blue, and I want to check out this imperial blue, and I want to check out this, uh, this tan. Let's check out the imperial blue first. That's a little blue. It's a little too dark blue, I think. It's very cool, though, and I think it'll look great with, that, uh, with the old English co paint color scheme, though, to be honest with you. Now, that's quite nice. That's quite nice. Let's do that tan. And then the secondary hide, the secondary hide. Let's see what the imperial blue looks like for secondary hide color. That's very nice, isn't it? Now, that's very nice. So we got the imperial blue secondary hide. The main hide is that new market tan. And we could flip it around. We could flip it around, but uh, we'll just leave it alone. Secondary hide, imperial blue. I think it looks pretty good. Now we're going to move on to the veneers. That's our wood finish. I'm usually I, I'm usually like a walnut. I usually like uh, the burl walnut, but they don't offer burl walnut these days. They got a dark stained burr walnut, and they got a burr with regular one. But they got this dark fiddleback eucalyptus. I'm kind of curious about it. I don't really care for the piano black, and I certainly don't think it goes with our color scheme. So let's let's see about the uh, the dark fiddleback eucalyptus. No, 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 no. That doesn't look good. Let's try the Koa. The Koa looks more at home. The Koa looks a little more at home. Let's try the uh, Crown Cut Walnut. That looks okay, but no. Let's try the Burr Walnut. We'll just let it spin. It just takes a hot second. There's the Burr Walnut. No, definitely not. Here's this Tamo Ash or whatever it's called. I don't think so. 
I don't think so. I think that let's try the liquid amber. And if the liquid amber doesn't look good, I think we've gone through all of them. We're going to go with the Koa. The liquid amber actually isn't too bad. It's not too bad, but I think I might like the Koa a little better. Yeah, I think I like the Koa a little better. Now they got dual finish veneers. Oh, okay. And then veneer options. What are the veneer options? Uh, chrome pinstripe, veneered picnic tables, uh, all that kind. Do we want picnic tables? Nope, I sure don't. Veneered rear door panels in Koa. Oh, we can do the door panels in Koa? Let's check that out. I like that. You got to have some wood to match the back. I just realized they had no wood in the back. So, yeah, let's do veneered rear door panels in the same color as the front. That looks pretty good. All right. Uh, interior details. Let's move on. We've got the comfort specification. And what does the comfort specification give us? Adjustable cushion length, adjustable and active side bolsters, heated front and rear door center armrests, leather trim seat belts, leather trim seat belt buckets. Uh, adjustable shoulder tilt and ventilation massage, adjustable shoulder tilt ventilation massage for the front seats and outboard rear seats. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, they got the full length center console. I don't want that. And then they got the contrast seat belts. I guess we do have contrast seat belts. And then there's semi aniline leather to seat inserts. I don't know about all that. I think we'll just leave it the way it is because I'm happy with it. Uh, here they got stitching and piping. We've got contrast stitching and seat piping. I'm fine with that. We've got emblem stitching. We've got contrast. That works. Steering wheel and driver controls. we got the heated single-tone, three-spoke heated trim steering wheel. Uh, what about a duo-tone? What would a duo-tone look like? I think I like the duo-tone steering wheel. Now, they have uh, another style. Oh, they have they got the heated dual-tone, three-spoke high trim steering wheel. And then uh, indented hide. I, I don't think we need to get too technical about it. Uh, I do want the sport pedals. So watch down here. The pedals are just all black right now, but they should get a little chromey accent on them. So let's go with the sport pedals. Come on. There we go. There's the sport pedals. Uh, carpet binding without contrast binding or contrast binding. Let's see what the contrast looks like. So to do that, we've got to get the deep pile over mats for front and rear. If I click on the info tab here, I guess it's just the thicker, the thicker one, the thicker rugs, I guess. Let's go ahead and accept that. They don't show us a good shot. Oh, let's see if we can find a better shot. No, they don't really show us a good shot of the stitching. I can see it a little bit in that corner there. Yeah, they don't show us a good shot of the stitching. I can see it a little bit down on the, on the passenger footwell down there. But yeah, we've got the contrast carpet binding. Let's check out optional equipment. So what do we got? The touring specification. We already have the city specification. Can we get both city and touring specification? I like to have both. Yes, you can get both. We can see they're both highlighted. You get to get the diamond knurling specification, which gives you like the diamond knurling. Wow, their picture's really low slow. Diamond knurling. All that's very beautiful. Got to get that. We also got to get the mood lighting. So we're all over the mood lighting. All right, I think we're good there. The rest of it is just some wheels. You got the motor driving specification with alternative wheel. What, alternative steering wheel? They don't even show us anything here. What are we looking at? All right, oh, that gives you that special diamond quilting stuff. Eh, I think it's all right, but I'm okay. I like our seats the way they are. They're cool. But, uh, yeah, let's move on to the exterior. What do we got for exterior? Illuminated Flying B, we got it. Styling specification, I guess we have that. Uh, we can do the standard brakes with red calipers. We can do the welcome lamps that are illuminated. Let's do that. If we wanted to, uh, these two here, we can do chrome. We can chrome out. We can get a little more bling going with our chrome, but I'm okay with that. Let's move on to convenience items. Uh, fresh air intake, air ionizer. That's a cabin freshener thing. Remote control garage door opener. That's not standard. Yeah, but give me that. We'll take the, uh, the garage door opener. We'll also take, uh, I don't think we need the refrigerator, parking heater, valet key, first aid kit. They got a standard battery charger. Uh, what's the parking heater all about? Enables the car to be warm remotely before you get in. Makes sense. <laughs> Let's get that. Okay, we got the parking heater. Also got the valet key. The valet key gives uh, lets you lets you lets you have somebody park the car, but they have no access to the to the. They can't open the trunk. They can't open the the hood. All right, we don't need the first aid kit. Audio and communication. You know we're going for the Bang & Olsen. You know we're going for the Bang & Olsen. 
Uh, they also have phone charging for the front and the rear. Let's at least do a digital TV tuner in addition to the digital radio. I'm kind of interested in that. So let's do the digital TV tuner and let's do the uh, inductive charging for the front and rear. Oh, so to do the inductive phone charging, we need to do that full length center console. We're not doing that. So no inductive phone charging for the rear, but you get inductive phone charging for the front. Uh, technology, adaptive cruise control, Bentley rotating display. We already talked about that. Definitely want the rotating display. Might as well get the adaptive cruise control. Why is this stuff not standard? The car starts at $220,000. Is this a Mercedes or something else? Because, you know, they're nickel and diamond us on everything. Well, I guess we can't have that. Fi we can't get the rotating clock or, or, or which center th uh, thing because we have the Koa finish. Well, never mind. Uh, and I'm not really I don't care about the adaptive cruise control. I hardly ever use I don't even use cruise control mats and rugs. We got the deep pile. We could go lamb's wool, but we can't do that with our contrast stitching. Uh, and then the warranty. This stuff's not a standard. We want the new car warranty and the new car extended warranty. Yeah, no. So they say that the new car extended warranty isn't configurable. And I, I, I'm assuming it's just the basic warranty, but I'm just going to say cancel on that. It's not that serious. Uh, accessories here. What do we got for accessories? Valve covers, caps. No, I think we could skip. Uh, now we're on to the summary. Here we are. They don't, they don't show us a price. But like I said, this vehicle started at $220,000. It doesn't even look like the Noir at all now. <laughs> it was supposed to be Storm Noir. It doesn't even look like Storm Noir anymore. But it's still beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous for sure. Uh, so, yeah, there it is. 2021 Bentley Flying Spur and our Storm Noir that looks nothing like it started. And, but it's a gorgeous vehicle. So on that note, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. If you found this review of the 2021 Bentley Flying Spur W12, mind you, helpful, informative, or entertaining, Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Other than that, I'm going to tell you to have a wonderful day, and I will see you on the very next video.